You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Wepa, what up, everybody? I'm your boy, Al Mega, back at Tusepa, what is Supremo, Isabella. We got a brand new Comic Crusaders podcast, and I'm very happy that I actually have an amazing guest, a fellow Latino de Colombia. Wepa, me Colombian American, of course, filmmaker, born and raised in Miami, you know, but he got that heritage because he know all that Wepa is all about, you know, part time camera operator, local TV production, but now he has gone on to a journey to create his own film. And let's talk about that, yo, because it's called Samland. It, it, it's gangster. It's a love story. It's amazing. That's right. Let me introduce the one, the only Wong Pablo Reyes. Wepa, right. what up, kiddo? How you doing? Thanks, Al. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Uh, super, super stoked to talk to you about uh, about everything. Uh, yeah, man. Let's do you it. Know, you got a journey, man. I, I, I love it, bro. So let's talk yeah. about you. One, first of all, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. You know, hanging in there. Uh, you know, as you know, your 2020 was a slow year for us in production. Uh, we, we just yeah. kind of got busy. You know, got busy actually coming the summer. Started working again. Uh, so we're slowly getting back into it. But right now we're on the verge of a strike. <laughs> right now there's what? There's a lot of talk right now with you know with, with all the local unions and like they're about to strike. What? And, what and happened? About, what happened? So you, it's you, just you in terms in, in terms of the hours, in terms of uh, so, not being able to be with your families, uh, you know, not being able to take the proper well, break. Well, is that it's, with it's COVID? A long time coming. Is that with COVID? I, I happened, you see COVID, values. Yeah, with COVID, exactly. you see new different what values and, and what's important. So it's like, okay, like, listen, I could work for you guys, but you got to give me the time to be me too, because, yeah. you know, COVID allowed me to see that I could work and be a family person. And I get that, right. you know, and yeah. I've even learned myself to calm down on certain days, Juan. Yeah. You know how, no. you know how difficult it is for, for Al Mega to calm down on a day? <laughs> how difficult but, is it, but man? Is it? You, you have no idea the degree of difficulty. <laughs> My wife has to pry me away, like, yo, know, because I'm always finding something to do. But I've chosen yeah. purposely, okay, yeah. this is my day with familia. See. And then, you know, other days off is business. You know what I mean? It's the important. Chat, we're awesome people like you. But this strike, it's like, so do you think that these unions will agree to, to what's being asked of? So I, I think what's going to happen because, you know, it just got voted on uh, and, and, and overwhelmingly everybody said yes to the strike. So it's going to happen. Oh, shit. Uh, so on, we'll yeah. see how, how fast the studios react to it and see if they come to the table with some right. new negotiations. Hopefully it happens gotcha. quick because otherwise, like, we're going to be out of work for a while. But So is there a primary concern that, that is looking to be addressed that, that you could talk about? There's Yeah, like a lot of it has to do with, you know, they – they have this thing called Friday days where, where they basically go from Friday to Saturday and they could technically sort of work you the whole day. Uh, 24 hours. Point, 24 hours without having to necessarily pay the fees. And a lot of these companies don't mind. You mean pay the fees? Wait, 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 wait. Work you 24 hours in one day and just and pay you like for eight hours and that's it? What, what they do is they have very creative accounting and they have like ways to get around it. But but the gist of it is basically like a lot of these companies are willing to sort of pay the money, but at the core of it is like you got to give these people breaks, you got to give these people like decent hours of work, you got to give these people yes, days off, and that's what's not happening. Like all these companies rather just pay, <laughs> pay, 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 but at the same time, you know your quality of life, you know, it's the and, mental and health like, as well, right on the money with it too. You're saying because of the pandemic, I think that just added fuel to that fire. I think people are aware, hey, there's a quality of life that I'm missing out on. And it's long overdue. It's been years since they had a strike like this. So oh, wow. hopefully change is coming. We'll see. We'll see. Vamos a ver, man. Es lo que Dios sea, you know? Vamos a ver. I, I hope so because, uh, again, it's, it's, it's true. I've, I've worked in places where I got overworked doing 120 yeah. hours in a week. I mean, yeah. you tell me, is that even fucking you? My, my wife was like, how the fuck do you humane. do this? Yeah, 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 but I was doing it because... You were doing it because you have you to, know, because you got to make your money, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, the need, not because of the want, 
not no, because of any man. greed. It's just because, well, when you are a one income home at a right. certain time, it's like, okay, you got to do what you got to do. But that that's a, that's a, a health and a mental health sacrifice staring at screens, you know, for yeah. a long period of yeah. time and dealing with people that are doing nothing but complaining. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not right. Fun. Not fun. But you know what? Let's talk about some fun stuff because yeah. let's talk about your journey. So, Juan, yes. man, where, where are you from? I mentioned you, you're a, a, a Colombiano. So, uh, yeah, but, but Colombiano. Talk about that heritage in, in Miami. Yeah. Talk about that, man. How was the culture so for here, sure, bro? man. So, so your mom and dad from Colombia, right? So, my mom is from Cali. My dad's from uh, from a small town called Ibagué. Uh, you know, both Colombian. Uh, you know, they moved out to uh, to Miami probably like in the early '70s. Uh, had me shortly after in Miami. Uh, I grew up in Miami myself. You know, I'm 305 in and out, you know, I mean, 305 for life. <laughs> for life. Uh, so I you know, grew up, man. I grew up in the 80s in Miami. That, that was right around some craziness going on with, with the cartels and, and yes. Colombia and stuff. And so, you know, I grew up a lot, like around a lot of that, actually. And that was kind of the inspiration to this story. But that's where I started. Yeah, I, I, I started in Miami and then uh, um, took some classes in high school, like uh, TV production class. You know that I was oh, they had to be and production just, in the high school. Nice. Yeah, high school level. Yeah. So, so at cool. the time, our school was like a charter school. So, uh, okay. It it had invested a bunch of money into uh, to a Stevie Studio, and they they had bought like all the new gear and all the new equipment. Nice. And I was able to take that class, and I fell in love with it. As okay, I, I gotta ask. It, I, go, you. I go. This is this is it. Yeah. Just, just out of the curiosity, the high school. Was it yeah. a diverse high school or predominantly one, you know, because offering such a great program, was it offered right. to a diverse high school? Yeah, no, no. It was it was in a very diverse community. It was, you know, very sort of heavy, like in Latino. But at the same time, it was also a magnet school. So we'd have a lot of like African-American kids would go to our school as well. Nice. So it, it was a good mix of like Latino, black, good. white. Good. Um, and, and like I said, the program was really, at the time, it was like state of the art. So I, 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 I got really you. lucky, right? I got lucky to sort of experience that. And, and, you know, going into that program, that's where I started to learn about TV production. And, I, and, and like, that's where I fell in love with it. Really? So was there yeah. any, like, any shows growing up that you watched that kind of inspired you too along the way? Oh, man, when I was a kid, I mean, I used to watch everything. Like, I used to watch a lot of TV as a kid. So, like, all those sort of 80s sitcoms uh you know wkrp in cincinnati uh oh wow welcome back carter yeah the old school stuff man yeah so, yeah that that's the stuff i grew up with you know i used to watch a lot of tv as a kid uh um, i still watch that stuff right now why you be like oh, my stuff. wife be like oh, ain't un viejo. i'm like but yo this is good stuff still <laughs> like now that it's i'm older stuff. i could really like get into it like okay they saying some shit here sometimes when you're a kid good you writing. laugh at the jokes exactly you know, good yeah. writing as a kid, you could laugh. As an adult, you'd be like, oh, shit. You start to think about, like, oh, this is what they're really saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you bastards. Yeah. You hit all, you're like, yeah. All in the Family is one of my faves that I've been watching oh, back on. Oh, such a great show. Yeah, bro. It's like, you know, seeing this viejo que ignorante, and I grew up around, you know, viejos like that in New York. Yeah. You know, for real. So I'm pretty sure that in your Miami growing up, you probably dealt with some craziness, no? Yeah, man. I mean, that was just from a, from from a very early age, and like I said, like you know, being surrounded sort of by Colombians. Like I, you know, I, I have like a cousin who went to jail. I have like you know, family members who spent time, and okay. and just seeing sort of these families being broken apart because it was so easy to make money back then, right? And okay. and unfortunately, that's that's the rep we have as Colombians, right? But that's what was available <laughs> to a lot of people coming from Colombia. Like that was the first thing a lot of people jumped into. Huh. And I'm talking about like decent decent people too man like smart people but they would still make those like those wrong choices you know and they would get into it uh so you know it was it was uh it was sad you know a lot of it but you know at the same time sort of knowing growing up yeah. around it i knew what was wrong what was right so you know it, it helped mold me as well yeah i get it man i don't mean to even yeah. laugh at that but it's like you know being from new york i get that how, how many latinos are, are stereotyped in different ways and it's true when you think coke you think colombian right, <laughs> like, right. yeah like, it, it's it, it sucks what 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 an awful you know thing to be stuck to <laughs> i know dude i know i know, I know and, but and, you hopefully know, you're gonna change the game 
You know what though? Gonna and get, that's, you're that's gonna change the, the game though, because exactly. the next time people, people, when people think Sam Land is like, yo, Colombia, yo, this Colombian dude right here, son, Colombian go. American, kicking some ass. But you you go, know, so let's let's talk about that journey, bro. Like, like what kind of led you first into the dynamic of wanting to get into the production? How, did that high school class really affect you to that scale where like that was your, a love? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was, you know, the launching pad for me. And that's when I, 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 I started asking the questions like, can I do this as a job? Like, is this like, you know, is this really a job for people? And then I started sort of doing my research and, you know, you get to find out, yeah, there's people who actually do this kind of work. And I, I remember watching a movie, like I was watching a movie, uh, uh, you know, old black and white movie called Citizen Kane. And, you know, watching it in film school, and I remember like my teacher pointing out all these shots and all these visuals to me. I'm like, like, holy crap. Like there's all this like subtext and, and the, like the way they shoot it and the way they light it just like completely fascinated me and it completely made me fall in love with it. Uh, and then right after that, it was about like, you know, how can I get into film school? So then it was, a, you know, that was a matter of like applying to the schools and, and trying to find, you know, like that perfect place for me and stuff. And at the time I was lucky because it was like early nineties um orlando florida had a lot of production going on like it was supposed to be the next hollywood oh, so was a i'm lot, in orlando like a lot of, oh yeah well dude there's a lot of puerto ricans in orlando i i know I, i'm a puerto rican like yo find me yo i'm ready to do a movie if you need yeah, a puerto dude. rican in a movie bro let me know Juan. I'm, for I'm sure dude for, you, for sure man like i'm always casting man i'll die but, and know, say where pies, i'm dying where <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man. So that was, you know, and, 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 you know, we got into film school in Orlando and, uh, and, you know, I just took it from there, man. I just kept, you know, just kept. Where in Orlando? That what film school you go to in Orlando? So, what about that? To the University of Central Florida. So, okay. So, you know, UCF, uh, okay. which is also the film school that the guys who did the Blair Witch Project came out of. Like, you know, right. that's your claim to fame. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so that's just, I went to that school, you know, a couple years in that. And then I graduated from film school and I went directly to Los Angeles. I had never been to LA in my life. And I said, that's, you, that's why I got to go. You went. I just went. I you went, went blind. There. I went you, blind. Did you have any family? Nothing? Nobody, man. I, I, I came said, by myself. Say, Hola. <laughs> God I said, Hola todo. I'm going to go. I'm going to figure it out. And, and that's what I did. How did but, it go? I mean, like, I got lucky because I had made some connections in Orlando because at the time, you know, a lot of production, like I was saying. So, um, so I had to work with Nickelodeon. Um, nice. as a PA and I worked in Panavision as well in Florida. So, so I made some connections already in Orlando and I was able to use those connections in Los Angeles. So as soon as I landed, I was able to get a job probably like a month into my move. And I was able to work in Nickelodeon right off the bat. And wow. you know, the first show I worked on is a show called Cousin Skeeter. Cousin Skeeter is like an old, um, <laughs> You know, it's like a Muppet show. It, yeah. it's, you know, it's like a you know, like a puppet guy with a. It sounds like a that. viejo, <laughs> like a viejo show. My <laughs> cousin Skeeter was the first thing I wrote that. Yeah. Nice, bro. That's awesome, bro. How exciting yeah. was that when you landed that? I mean, it was scary, man, because I'd never been here. So you know, just getting and this is like way before GPS, right? So I had my Thomas guide. I had this big thick book called. The he Thomas said guide. Thomas guy, go on yo. Everybody for and you kids, see. that's a book. Right. No digital that's shit. A book or not. That's how we used to do it back in the day. It's a book I thought not. I thought you were gonna tell me that you printed this shit on MapQuest. No, dude, that that happened a couple years later. But no, no, it was it was you know Thomas guide at the time, yeah. So trying to get Thomas. around Los Angeles as a PA on a Thomas guide, I mean, wow. you know, like never being around the city. That was rough. That was rough, but you know. Yeah, we're showing our age, folks. That's some crazy. We shit, are. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I that love it. Okay, so you did that. And how did that type of work kind of lead you to want to do something on your own? So I mean, it was always about me wanting to do something on my own. Like I always wanted to be a filmmaker. Like that's what I went okay. to school for. That that was always the passion, right? But you know, the the immediate need was to work. So how many so, years experience in the work? So I, I've, I mean, I've been doing it now for, I mean, I'm going on 22 years. So oh, wow. I, 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 Check that out. Yeah. That's nice. Thank kid. you, man. Yeah. Beautiful. So I, 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 I came out to LA in um, 99. Uh, it was like late 99. So yeah, it's been a while, man. So, you know, I've been at it for a long time. But, uh, you know, being sort of wanting to do my own thing, that just came about. I mean, that's just always what I wanted to do. 
but I never got to it because I was always so busy working, you know, paying the student loans, paying the bills. Um, and then I just eventually, I just said, you know what, I got to do this, man, because nobody's going to give me this opportunity. Yeah. You know, being Latino, like I hate to say, but I, 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 I think it works against you a little bit because they read my name on paper and they just assume for whatever reason, they just don't think that, you know, Latino is able to be creative or that Latino is able to direct or that Latino is able to write. You know what I mean? So they don't want to give most of us a chance. It's harder right. because the narrative nowadays isn't about us. It's like this. It seems that the USA forgets, you know, you guys are more than just two colors. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right and I'm just saying, I hate being political, but that's just, you know, it's just the truth in that, that I feel don't live every day. Right. You know, I, I work very hard. Like you tell me another person that did almost 38 podcasts in a month. You know what I mean? Nobody. That was me last month. You know? Yeah. You know, yeah. I did it, but you, did everybody talk about that. I'm beg or no. But si fuera una blanquita, forget about it. You know? Yeah. No, you're <laughs> the right. Truth. You're right. You know, I mean, that's, just, that's just making a point. Truth, just though. saying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Just how the so, narrative it, goes, and it sucks. Yeah. And, and like, it gets to a realization, like, you know, it gets to a point where you start to realize yourself, like, okay, well, I'm going to have to do something on my own. You know, like, I got to do my own thing. You know, so I'm going to create my own project. So yeah. that's that's what I ended up doing. I go, this is the only way that I'm going to get any kind of like attention, any kind of traction. So, you know, it, it came about because of that need, you know, uh, as well. But also just like those 20 years, you know, like I was able to build experience. I was able to build contacts. I was able to sort of build it. So by the time I got to that point, I felt like I was ready. I was ready. Nice. You know what I mean? Nice. I was ready to do it. You know what I mean? So, but uh, you know, that took years, man. It, it took years. It took a All lot right. of... Uh, I want to know here. I got to yeah. know here. Because I have a fellow a filmmaker on my Comic Crusaders team, Lance Lucero. Shout out, right? And he's a filmmaker. He, he he does Kodak film. That's how he films. So how did you learn to film? Was it digital? Was it actual film film? Like, what? What? how did you go about technically? So on your joint for me it was digital yeah so so from the beginning i mean at the very beginning i remember that we used to shoot on tape <laughs> you know like at the very beginning <laughs> we were talking like early you know early 2000s so don't like, tell me a, a vhs a beta or the, no like, no no that. it was it was like the mini dvs so okay. about this big you know what i mean oh yeah. wow but everything used to be on tape back then yeah so uh so that's how we used to do it but so i i came up the camera route so you know like as soon as i was a pa for a long time and then right around 2000, uh, I got an opportunity to work on a little unknown show at the time called The Bachelor. No so, way! Like, the, Bachelor, the Bachelor had just started, right? And I got Say on that way. as a PA. And that's what kind of led to my whole career with reality. Like, I've, that's, you know, that's my bread and butter still, where I do a lot of reality shows. Uh, oh, yeah. But I, I took the camera route. So, you know, I worked myself from my camera assistant to camera operator to director of photography to director. So uh, just, you know, so, so camera wise, it's always been digital. I'm very visual. That's my background, you know? Um, but yeah, like it went from tape to, to digital. Uh, digital, I like to say maybe for the past like 15 years now, it's been like hundred percent like hard drive digital. Okay. Uh, but like back in the day it was boxes, man. Like it was boxes of tape. You know, you used to carry, <laughs> I used to carry boxes this big. Bendito, tape, I know right? your back says, thank God, bro, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. This is what I want to do, Juan. Before we even start talking about the amazing film you produced that led to this, let me show the trailer. I found yeah. it. I'm going to show it off to the people, all right? Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. I just wanted to have a regular American life, like everyone else, you know? A house, to be accepted, a new chance. I want to build the wall. We need the wall. We have to have strong borders. We have to keep the drugs out of our country. ICE, they all want the wall. We stop the drugs. We have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. ¿Eh? Que mi papá se murió. Me están buscando y necesito hacer algo. Mira, te mando por texto unos detallitos y mando a Nacho que te busque. Paz, Pote has a big surprise for you. You're about to get married, Bato. Felicitaciones. Oh, happy day. ¿Cómo es la vaina? No, 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 no. He said a drug and a green card. 
tu padre era tremendo tipo. Me salvó la vida. El camión es tuyo. Y la gringuita, bueno, ahí te la dejo. Voy a necesitar algo de dinero, ¿no? Arranca. I'm not ready to go back to my broken country yet. Is it him? You must be him, huh? So what's the plan here, Ace? Plan? Okay, all I want is my ceremony and the money. There's no money. You drained him for your drugs. He told me he was gonna pay me. Me tumbaste la piñata con lo de tu madre. Yo no tengo ni idea de lo que me estás diciendo. Ruega que esa piñata parezca, huevo. Mamá, mira que se apareció. ¿Quién te los dio? Te voy a encontrar más. You'll never find us. Just help me get my daughter back. Escondido en esa piñata es suficiente dulce como para comprarnos una nueva vida. Ten cuidado. Y en ese hueco, ahí no te saca nadie. I'm going to admit that you married Samantha so you could stay in the United States. She won't go to jail, and you can just go back to Venezuela. Man, I do love Sam. There huh. it is. Look at there that. Is. We have C-list emails. I want to watch this movie, you know, I, and I don't know anything about it. I just want to watch it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, C-list. There you go. So, I love so, that. I love that teaser worked. Yeah, yeah. Yo, what? You're talking about a teaser. That is malo, bro. I didn't even get to see the film myself. All I got was that teaser, too, folks. Don't know where. And now we, we, we were just in New York like like two weeks ago, man. We actually, uh, you know, got lucky. We were actually a part of the New York Latino Film Festival. Oh, where? how did that so go? We had, we had a great, it was fantastic, man. I loved it. It was, uh, you know, sponsored by HBO, sponsored by Warner Media, you know, awesome. Latino Film Festival in the Bronx, like South Bronx. Oh, wow. Uh, South it was awesome. It was yeah, like a drive, it it was a drive in experience. It's that hip hop song right left. there. <laughs> I love it, man. It was such a cool experience. It, it, such a and cool look experience. at it. This is so funny. It's like, I thought it was a comic show, but now I need more of this. <laughs> Necesito ¿Qué, más. ¿Qué pasó, compas? Wait and see. You got to see the movie. You got to watch the movie. Yeah, but this is more than a comic book show here, folks. We talk to creators from every creators. all walks of life. Like, this is about creators, because you know what? You never know. This could be turned into a comic book theory. Sam, that's going to be a movie, a comic book franchise. It's going to be everything. You never know. So, yeah, so Juan, let, let, let's talk about you know, like, how the first that you even uh, get inspired to do the film and how did you find you know your cast? Yeah, so you know, the inspiration of the movie... Uh, you know, like I alluded to earlier, was sort of growing up in Miami in nineteen, you know, in the nineteen eighties, right? Where, where I, I personally had a lot of family members that that like you know had been going to jail, that had gotten arrested, that that were trying to get their green card. So it was just a combination of all these different things happening at the same time. My mother also uh, she worked uh, or she still works actually for immigration. She does, uh, you know, she does green card marriages. So, you know, the basis of this whole thing, like that was sort of the seed of it was sort of I'm going to base it off of a green card marriage and have it be the story of how these two people met and, and the story they're trying to put together in order to get that green card marriage. Uh, so, so and, and then that was kind of the start of it. And then I was able to think, OK, well, it'd be cool to do something where two cultures are kind of clashing. We have like, you know, the Americana, the gringa going yeah. with, you know, Venezolano. <laughs> and that sort of that 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 clash of cultures, right? But also the drug dealer versus the drug addict. So just looking for those two kind of opposites, sort of polar opposites, to, to always sort of be in this constant sort of flux the whole way through the movie. Uh, but yeah, at the core of it, it's you know a love story because they do have to come together to try and make it work, and they both have their own reasons for doing it too. So um, how long? So is that's the how film? it came about. Yeah, the movie's about an hour and twenty minutes. Oh, nice, bro! Oh yeah, my God, I gotta see this film, bro. Yeah, man. you know that 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 teaser really done done it. It feels so gangster for me. Um, and you said you the life experience. So how did you get that cast? Yo? How how did you work? So that the out? cast, yeah, the cast I got really lucky with. So I um I have some really you know they're they're pretty big names in Venezuela, like uh, 
Carlos Montilla, he's like a soap opera actor in Venezuela. Like he's oh, pretty well, well known. Then, uh, novela, uh, no, joda. Novela, novela, <laughs> yeah. And then I have another guy called Luis Fernandez. Uh, uh -huh. He's also from Venezuela. He's also like a well-known actor in Venezuela. And then I have the legend, Mimi Lasso. Mimi Lasso is an old school Say, telenovela well, actor. How did you get that? What yeah, you so she's yo, a, yo, are you doing? Yo, I got pulled. her. Look at this guy. He's all chill. He got pulled, I'm, I'm yo, all... <laughs> in the Latino universe. Where, pa? What's no, popping? I, I, dude, I got lucky, man. I just, you know, my, <laughs> says, you know, my business partner, you know, is also from Venezuela, too. And, and like, nice. he knew Carlos. And then Carlos knew, like, Luis. And Luis is married to Mimi. So it was all kind of connected. Uh, a network. Kind of like an organic Beautiful. way, yeah. So, you know, it just happened to work out that way. But that was kind of the, you know, the gist of it. Uh, and then I have another actor, great, great actor called Alejandro Patino. He, uh, he's Mexican. He's done stuff like, yeah, he was in Scarface. He's worked with the Coen brothers. He's nice. done, the guy has like a resume. That's incredible, man. Like the guy's just been in everything. He's also a fantastic actor that we got as well in the movie. Uh, nice, man. How does you feel on even landing these people? I mean, I, you know, it's a little overwhelming, right? Because it was my first feature. So, you know, having to direct these legends, this, right? Folks? I'm like, what am I doing here, man? Like, I don't even deserve, you know, like, I'm not worried. What anything, a way but... to pop your Chevy. I mean, I'm folks, not exactly. if you don't understand these names, please look them up after the fact and yeah. be wild, like, on his first, all right? On my that, first, on my this first. This is how yeah. you do it. That's how you yeah. do it. But, That's... you know, a lot of it, for me, was sort of instinct, you know? I, you know, they they say, you know, directing is like 90% casting. And that's what I did. Like, I just cast it right, oh, I think, fun. you know, and then I was able to play with them a lot. And I, I gave them a lot of freedom, too, by the way, because I I come from that reality world. So where everything's improvised. So I was able to sort of apply that to them where we, we would get what we need, but we were working off an outline. Like, I wasn't married to my words because I wrote it. So I was like, well, if you guys feel like it shouldn't be this way, let's do it this way, you know, or you mm -hmm. guys give me a version of what you think it is. So that, that was a constant uh, trying to search for the better way of doing things. And uh, they really appreciated that style of working. Uh, I, that's how I work. So, you know, like it worked out perfectly in that sense. And, and when did you film this? Was this done during the COVID period or before that, during? I mean, what, what happened? Yeah. There? So, so in part, so we started shooting in 2018. Uh, we started towards the end of 2018. We shot about a week. And then in 2019, we shot uh, another four days towards the middle of the year. And then we shot towards the end of the year of, of 2019. We shot like the last two days, I think, that we have left. And then uh, 2020 hit and we were about to start post-production. And that's when everything kind of closed down like crap. Like we were right on schedule to finish in 2020, uh -huh. but everything got closed down. So we had to get really creative. Uh, so a lot of Zoom calls. A lot of, uh, you know, there's this great, like, really amazing promo called uh, Frame.io, where you get to see, you know, oh, all the video know and you can make notes on it. Yes. It's yes. fantastic. Yeah. Like, that was a key to our success because I was able to work yeah, fellow with geek, my composer that way. I worked <laughs> with my editor that way. Like, I was able to make all my notes back and forth. And that that's what got me through it because otherwise, and, and then trying to do the ADR sessions with all the actors, it was like, COVID protocols. I had to wear a mask oh, in the wow. studio. Like all the, I the actors had to be isolated. So yeah, it was very, it was very challenging. But you know, you you know, you try and figure out a way, man. Like everybody adjusted, right? You know, all the businesses adjusted, we adjusted. So you know, you know, you you, you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. So, so know, how was that submission process? So once you finished the film and you started submitting, how was those submitting. first times? So how was that so, first time you got accepted, man? Tell me about that Oh, my feeling. God, that felt so good. So, yeah, the first one we got accepted into was a uh, um, a small little film festival uh, right outside of Charlotte called the Full Bloom Film Festival. Uh -huh. And it's this tiny little town, man, but they embraced us. Uh, they just loved the movie. They had us uh, They had us over, like, VIP when we got there. Uh, it, it's a small town, so everybody was just enthusiastic about us and, and about the film and uh, and we actually ended up winning the best narrative feature in that festival, which was a complete surprise. So nice. that was our first win, our first festival. And it was just, I mean, the whole thing was amazing, man. It's not, uh, it, 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 it's sort of, it's, it's a good feeling to have it being recognized. Cause you know, it is, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It oh, yeah, definitely. 
just to How get many it done. hours so, would you say you put into the film? Oh, I, I you can't know, even tell you. Know, you know, doing the film and then even post at it. I mean, beyond, because I would go beyond. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate, right? So I would, I would stay up. That's those Latinos. That's the fire in us. We're That's hot. Fire, We're caliente. It's the fire, yeah. 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 Especially That's with the awesome. post-production part of it. Like, I was just making notes, and I would just go over it. I really just, you know, like, nitpick everything. I, I, I mean, I'm sure my editor probably hated me, man, but I was, <laughs> I, I, I just had a really clear idea as to what I wanted with post-production, especially uh, with the post side of things, yeah. You know what? He's going to love you when, when y'all make like... that bank on how awesome <laughs> the film is. Exactly, Stop making that exactly. bank. And he's going to be like, oh, Papo, I love it. Bro, thank you. Thank you for being hard on me. Exactly. Listen, you know what? Sometimes you got to be hard on uh, on people anyway in order for them to do their best because this is what yeah. it is. I love people That's being true. hard on me. I have people like that on my team that check me every once in a while and be like, yeah. Al, Al, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you need cats like that. It's it, awesome. So tell me what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned, you know, in this whole journey of yours. You know, you, you've been in the business 20 plus years. You've been on the... Yeah on the you know on the back end of it but now you're coming into a forefront brother you, you you're the man behind it you know what i mean so how does that feel and what lessons have you learned in it i mean it feels amazing right i mean it feels <laughs> amazing to just have my own idea and, and, and like i tell you it's 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 super trippy to see you know your your characters and, and your words on screen you know and to have these actors you know embody that uh, I mean, like the main lesson, and I, you know, kind of touched on it before. It's like I should have done this sooner. Like I should have realized that I, I always had it in me. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I always had the tools. I always had, you know, the brain to do this, but sort of not doing it sooner. So my advice is like, do it. Just create. Write your own thing. Make your own movie. And you know, easier said than done. But you know, you push it you figure it out. You know, the universe starts to kind of align itself. I, I know what I was doing. I'm just like, I'm going to write a story. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to get this money and I'm going to do it, you know? And that's, and that's what happened. You know, it, it, it starts to align itself. It, like things start to open for you. And, and that, that's the one thing I learned is that I'm never going to let that sort of ever hold me back knowing that, Hey, just cause I don't have an answer to a question, I'm going to keep pushing for the answer uh uh and that's you know that's that that's the number one thing i got out of this for sure gotcha and you know what uh you know what's funny why i want you to know this you are part of a milestone of mine now am i <laughs> yeah awesome, you know man. how so how 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 exactly this is the 100th comic crusaders podcast wow 100 yeah awesome man i love it so thank you for being part thank of you, my man. journey. Yo, we're number 100 with a fellow Latino that is on the rise, mi gente. Like, thank check you, out man. this film. It's a this... pleasure. It's an honor, man. It's an honor. Nah, man. It's my honor, though, because at the end of the day, I'm the one that's honored to talk to, again, also people like yourself. Y'all yeah, doing stuff and, you know, casting so many Latinos in the film. I'm hearing Spanish. Yeah. But I'm also here in English. So like for me, it's so easy for me to transition. I mean, maybe not for everybody. I understand that. But for me, yeah. I'm like, so it's so easy. Like, okay, English, Spanish. I'm understanding it like they're talking one language. It don't matter to me, kiddo. I love it. And, and, and Al, I got to say, man, it was so important for me to cast Latinos. Like, I wanted it to be, like, if I'm going to do a movie about Venezuelans, I want my cast to be Venezuelan. I, I can't oh, they tell you were? how annoying it is. Yeah, they were. Yo, so I can't bro. tell you how. I tell how my wife it. this shit all the effing time. It's like, yo, how if you don't cast is a, a person. A Mexicano is trying to play a Colombian. Uh, all right. trying to play, uh, you know, Puerto Rican. I, just cast the people. There's, right. I there's want enough to talent. Dude, we all have enough okay. talent. There's enough Puerto Ricans that are super talented. If I'm bro. making a movie about Puerto Ricans, I'm going to cast Puerto Ricans. Okay. If I'm making a movie about Venezolanos, I'm going to cast Venezolanos. You know Juan. what I mean? So, yeah. Juan, how do you feel yeah. about the movie Encanto? And I know Lin Manuel is hot. Yes. But he's Puerto Rican, not right. Colombian. Right. And you're doing a Colombian film. Why you know, like my, my wife said, why not get Carlos Vives? He's Colombian and he's a ill composer. Well, you, Carlos Vives is involved with Encanto, by the way. So well, he, is. Oh, he is a part of it. But, yeah, no, yeah, but yeah, why yeah. is he not the lead? He he's not the lead on it. No, I know, I know. I, I, I think it, that if it's a Colombian based movie, I guess, it's like people also gotta understand that we're all Latinos, yes. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, yes. But we all have 
different and rich cultures that need yeah. to be understood. And even it's dialects. The nuances, the nuances. Yeah. You know what I we mean? talk yeah. so different. You right, know, you like do. a, a lot do. of the Colombians say the pues thing. You know, that's not a Puerto Rican thing. We don't say pues right. shit. <laughs> you know I mean? Pues, pues, yeah, yeah. You know, that's not our thing. That That's a Colombian thing, you know? Like, right, right. And then uh, what what is it with, 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 with Cubans and, and Spaniards with the vale? Vale, 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 yeah. Right? Vale. That's not that's not yeah, a yeah. Puerto Rican thing, uh, right, nor a right. Colombian thing, right? Right. So, right, like you right. said, the nuances in our language. This is why, I kind of, uh, if you remember the Spider Man film with the uh, Into the Spider Verse with Miles, when yeah. I heard his mom talk, that movie. and that she yeah. was Boricua, and I heard Puerto Rican inflection and you know slang and, and you know the I way we it, talk, man. I was yeah. like. God damn it! Finally, <laughs> somebody it's got so it right. It's so appreciated, man. It's so appreciated. It is. It you, is. Man. It's so important to us. I, and I know? love that you understand that, and I love that you roll with that. So thank you for doing that. Like, yeah, there's a lot yeah, of characters yeah. get that because they have a certain way that they talk that could only be expressed by them. You don't want an actor acting. Okay, let right. me look this shit up on Google and how they talk. Nah, man, you want someone that's OG. So thank you for right. doing that. That makes right. you even more special in this, bro. Like yeah, you, you and, do, and you like do right by in, us. Yeah, and like not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera too. Like I was real, like you know, like my producers are all Latinos. I got a Cuban, I got a Venezolano. Yeah, um, nice. Like, E-man I, I, agrees. <laughs> I, I made you all right. Yes, yes. It's important, man. It's important, you know. Yes. And uh, there's there's very few shows that take the time to really get it right. And yeah, I have to man. say, maybe with Encanto, because I know Encanto did a lot of research, and there's a lot of deep. I mean, so far, I mean, I haven't seen the movie yet, but but I'm what excited I see, to I see like, it though. I'm excited because I think they got a lot of the details right, and Listen, we need just the this. fact that they're trying, that yeah. they're trying. I mean, that's why you could ask. Era right? tiempo, carajo. <laughs> Era tiempo, man. Era tiempo, yeah. I've been waiting all my life. Like my wife be bugging out what she be seeing. Like this month, they've been releasing Latina-based Barbies. She's like, Latina oh my Barbies. god. Yeah, they did a oh, Latina, wow. they did a Celia Cruz Barbie. But guess what, though? You can't buy this in what? stores, one of a kind. Oh, uh, well, that's but the thing. That, but, but yeah, like, damn, that, why are you going to tease us that way? Give, give it right, to the right. public. Right. But they've also released other Latinas, like a Mexican, I believe, Puerto Rican, South American, like different types, Colombian, I believe, right. um, characters look. So my wife is like, you know what? They're still showing us, and I want all of these. Even though yes. she's Puerto Rican, Dominican, Lebanese, she's three. <laughs> oh wow! It can make la coña. It's a good got, mix, man. Yeah, I, I got the best <laughs> of it, but I better watch out. <laughs> you gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Bro, man, you've been awesome, bro. I can't wait to see your film. So, if people want to Thank check you your out. film, bro, where else can we check it out? Because I know I've been showing that it's gonna be in fully PA. But if people want to see it now, there's any way they can see it now yeah. on any so, video platforms. Yeah, so so right now we're basically just hitting the festival circuit right now. So yeah, if you go to the uh, go to the website uh, semanmovie.com, it's gonna have sort of all the updates in terms of screenings. Uh, right now it's all about festivals, but we are on the verge of selling it. So hey, it, it does wait, happen, wait, 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 it wait, 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 wait. Talk about we're on the verge, this. Well, we're on the verge. Yeah, we're on the verge. How this happened? How this happened? What's so, going on? This is a lot. My producer, he's you know he's you know he has all his contacts and he was able to send the movie out to a bunch of uh, buyers and, you know, just a handful of companies were interested and, and like Beautiful. they gave us offers. So not a matter of like trying to find, you know, the perfect home for it. And, nice. and we have one that we really like. So right now we're, we're talking with them and we're about to close it. Uh, it's just Beautiful. about paperwork okay. at this Congrats. point. So it's going to happen yeah, soon, man. I'm excited. And so when that happens, if it happens this month, then that means for January. So January, is when the movie will go wide release and then oh! more than likely platforms i'm sure you know some type of digital platform i'm sure it'll be available wonderful um and we'll see how where excited it goes are you kiddo how excited are you man? i mean that's that's amazing <laughs> man. i mean that's that's the american dream right i mean that yes it is that's what the movie's about that's it's what about the movie's the about dream. exactly that's my american dream so i I'm, I'm just lucky i'm blessed man and and i'm just so happy that you know it's finally coming to fruition yeah, but well, God bless you on this continued journey, bro. I'm a Thank fan. You, I can't wait to see this film, bro. If, if if you could if you could send me a screener, bro. Stop. I mean, if you want to see the screen, mama. I can send it to you. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely, bro, man. please, bro. I want to sit I'll... down with wifey and watch some sand and, and tell and talk I'll about it. I'll send you the screener. 
And I'll just tease people on yeah, not wet, but I won't tell I won't tell nobody the narrative, but I'll tell All them right. how awesome it is for sure. Because I love it. Yeah, you know, it's it right up my alley. I grew up in the nineties with these gangster films and slice of life, like yeah. uh what was it, Blood In, Blood Out, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. You know, American yeah. Me. Yeah. Uh what was it? Uh, uh, Boys in the Hood, Juice. Yeah. <laughs> All that juice. good shit. Yeah, juice yeah. was the other one, juice. I love yeah. juice. Yeah, have you not seen juice? Uh I saw Juice, yeah. I mean, years okay. ago, but yeah. Bro, I yeah. saw that shit in the movie theaters as an independent film in an independent film theater. That's how far oh, back God. I go in the point that, you know, supporting indie. I took yeah. my wife to that shit, my then girlfriend, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, you want to see this movie fresh? Like, what the hell is this? I said, yo, I like in these films. Yo, this is gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I love so that. I, I love I've that. always been about independence. That's why I said, I appreciate yeah. people like you. So, like, like, I always like to do this. Let me give you your flowers, kiddo. You just are uh, just thank a you, beginner, Al. but thank you for sharing of yourself. Appreciate it, man. Thank, thank you, you for being bold and just putting yourself out there like that. Don't ever thank be you. afraid, bro, because what you're doing, I I appreciate it. So thank you. Even with the words you thank say, you, like Al. I'm getting people within, you know, if they're this, that's what I get. So even right. thank you for doing it as a fellow Latino. It means yeah. a lot because you really truly understand. The shit mm-hmm. that we really talk about, right? That right. we nitpick about, it's like, okay, you know, know what? I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm gonna get the right people for it, and and right. that's done. So thank yeah. you. So God bless yeah. you on your journey. Thank you, Al. I know Sam Land's gonna rock. I can't wait to see this in a movie theater. I can't wait. I can't on wait a streaming either. network. Yeah. I can't wait to see the screener. <laughs> yes. yes. Epa, let's do it. So with Epa. that, folks, if you wanna watch this right. film or just know about it, where he's going. You know what what film festival in your town please visit mm-hmm. samlandmovie.com but the next place he's gonna be is on october 16th at the first class film festival in philadelphia pennsylvania yeah. all right we'll pa right there yo check it out october 16th go see this film you check saw the out. trailer you saw the trailer you know you like this yo you, you you know you guys were like yo this looks like fire yeah well why not but this is a young buck rising on up in the game bro so support the homie because I know we're going to see a whole lot more. Next thing you know, he's going to be directing some Star Wars films and some horror wow. movies. I, I see it, bro. <laughs> Listen, when you speak it on to... Dude, I would okay. love to do a Marvel movie, man. I, I, there I, you I, go. I would love to do a... I want to do a Spawn movie. A Spawn oh, movie. All right. Say it out again. Say it out. Speak it to Spawn. the world again. I want to do the next Spawn movie. There you go. Todd, we have another director Todd. that could probably even do it better. Yes. Kiddo. Look, look, look. Juan yes. Pablo. Yes. Right there, bro. All right? Yes. You heard? All right. So, Paul Latino. So, with that, I'm out mega with the amazing Juan Pablo. Make sure to check out the film. Thank you for tuning in. You know what to do. The outro says it all. Everybody, much love. Thank you for tuning in. And after the proxy, man. Yeah, too sorry. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 